Poyoverse made the biggest mistake I've ever seen a company make and admitted it. I love hyperbolic opening statements, and this is a conversation about the future of Honkai Star Rail. But before we get into that, gotta plug the Discord. A lot of you actually joined in the last video, and I'm extremely excited about that. The server feels really alive now, and it's so much fun. So if you haven't already, join it. Also, my Patreon. Also, my Twitter, I guess. How the f do you get Twitter followers anyway? <laughs> Banger tweets. Does this count? I don't know. I'm tweeting it. So. The statement. This month, Hoyoverse released a statement to the public in their developer letter entitled Voice of the Galaxy. So let me read you the most important part. <clears throat> Okay, now that the villagers understand it, let me read it in English. Someone, I guess a Randy, asked, In the Sienjo storyline, the content related to Sanctus Medicus seems really abrupt and forced. Then, Hoyover said, After assessing the feedback from Trailblazers, the crew has decided that the current placement of Sanctus Medicus missions in the story will negatively impact the overall narrative experience. Therefore, in future updates, the crew will adjust the quest structure and alter all Trailblaze missions related to Sanctus Medicus into adventure missions. Trailblazers will be able to freely explore and complete these missions. Please stay tuned for a more detailed patch note and future version update announcements. This is a pretty huge statement. To understand it, you gotta understand the story and how all this affects the future of the game. So for those of you who are caught up on the story, you'll know that it's kinda a cluster f So let me quickly catch you up if you're not. And Sanctus Medicus is just the beginning of these problems. But let me get out of the way that I love this game's story for the most part. In a previous video, I praised a lot of what it does, but cracks have started to form and we need to point them out for the whole place crumbles. Ah! After the player captures Kafka, they head to the exalting sanctum to wait for someone to escort them to where Kafka is being interrogated. So we're gonna get to something exciting, but we gotta wait. And while we are, we get roped into infiltrating a cult dedicated to the abundance called Sanctus Medicus, getting a secret drug that forces someone into a monster that then you give to a random blind scientist doctor person named Dan Shu who tells you to wait while examining it. And then you get escorted there. But <laughs> you don't mention any of this to the cast and they don't talk about it. Now, I really can't express how confused I was at all of this when it first happened. I thought, well, one word. Fucking nanny! We've infiltrated a cult at the center of the problems of this world, and it seems the main cast doesn't really want to make a note of it, and the central plot doesn't really want to get affected by what we did there. These types of head-scratching plot points continued. You talk to Kafka, interesting lore happens, and then this ancient evil tree that the Abundance f***ed over the Lofu people with gets revived, seemingly by the cult. Then something exciting happens. We're about to get into an all out war with the plants and maybe a cult and the whole shit might be under threat now. This is so exciting. So your cast is to take out the monsters that are being spawned from it. Save the townspeople. Everyone is in such danger. And the only people who can save- Oh, oh wait, I'm getting a call. What's up? <laughs> so, turns out, found out what the drug is. Also, there's this dumbass blonde kid getting picked on. Wanna come ruin her life with me? Also, I'm the Sanctus Medicus leader. I'm a cult leader, girl boss, blind badass bitch. So this is how these events actually happen. Well, besides the call, I might've embellished that a little bit. Like this is how these events are paced out in the game, at least. It's as if Dan Shu is driving a car and you're the passenger. <laughs> This has to be the choppiest, most cluster story Hoyoverse has written yet. So let's break down why. First, the obvious and the reason that this video is being made, Hoyoverse's statement. They themselves admit that all the Sanctus Medicus stuff feels really disconnected and will then be moved to essentially a world quest rather than a main story quest, which has me confused. So is Sanctus Medicus important? or not. Will this be a requirement for main story quests in the future, or will it simply be a quest that you can just ignore until after you finish the planet? I'm going to assume it will be a requirement, but if it is, we kind of still get into the same problem. Like, we've got to stop somewhere to make the player do all of this, which still messes with the pacing. This leads me to one of two conclusions. Either A, this story was always meant to be a world quest and Hoyoverse just threw it in for Luofu content, so they just chucked the story in all willy-nilly, or it is important. 
but they weren't sure where to place it with what we've gotten so far. So they just put it in there like when you record over old home movies. So how should they have fixed it? Well, if we could go back to the drawing board, I think you could make a simple change and it would drastically have improved the Sanctus Medicus plot altogether. You just replace Ting Yuan with Don Shu and then have us learn more about Don Shu slowly. That way, her reveal feels more natural and more impactful. Our guide from this world, someone we thought we could trust, was leading a cult that's pretty dead set on messing things up. That sounds like it could be a really fun reveal and would have us conflicted about the actions of a character, which leads to great storytelling. Instead, we don't get any moments with Dan Shu until she randomly tells us to go to a blind kid, exposits to her how hard her life has been because she was blind, hitting us over the head that she clearly wants to not be blind, then further expositing to us that she hates that she is blind. It's so blunt and forced and just, it's, it's just kind of bad. But this highlights the even larger issues here, namely, what the fuck is the plot of the Sianjo Lofu? And who and what are we meant to focus on? The plot up until this point was simple. Find Kafka, because she's suspected of creating the Stellaron situation. Then, after we learn her motives, it becomes stop this big ass tree and find out who's putting too much water into its soil. Okay, again, simple enough. But if you've noticed, I haven't mentioned other characters and their plots other than Kafka here. Even though there are approximately 800 quadrillion characters on this planet so far, we have Ting Yuan, Yu Kong, Jing Yuan, Yin Qing, Bai Lu, Qing Chui, Fu Xuan, Su Shang, and Luo Cha. And that's not even including our central trailblazer cast or the Stellaron Hunters. But somehow, the only characters who have seemed to have mattered at all here are Kafka, Dan Hung, Jing Yuan, and maybe Fu Xuan? The rest seem like gotcha cardboard cutouts made for you to ogle at as you walk past them in a bargain bin gotcha store window. That sounds harsh, but let's see what purpose these characters actually serve. Ting Yuan simply acts as a guide in exposition. Yu Kong exists, but is also exposition. Ching Jue is yet again another guide. Fu Xuan is more exposition and Su Shang is another guide. The only characters that allude to them having more intricate character stories and motivations are Jing Yuan because we haven't met him in person yet and he seems to have a connection to the Astral Express and he's central to the conflict with the Abundance. Yin Qing, who's his disgruntled disciple in one cutscene, and Luo Cha because he's clearly connected to the Abundance, who are, I think, think the central antagonists here? That's another thing. Who are we fighting here? Who is the antagonist? While we have an unfocused, crowded cast of tour guides, we don't really have a singular villain either. Before this statement, one would initially think it was Dan Shu, the blind Randy, but it can't be now, as her quest will be relegated to the prison of your overcrowded quest menu. Let's relate all of this back to Yurilo 6. Yurilo 6's cast are the following. Rania, Clara, Japard, Hook, Natasha, Sampo, Sila, and Serval. All of these characters serve a purpose in the main story, except Hook, and they all relate to the path of the world, the path of preservation. This seems to be an underrated story element of Eurelo 6, but the whole plot of all of its characters relate back to its central theme of preservation pretty perfectly. From those staying alive in the underworld and pushing forward, to those fighting off the horde on the surface, to those fighting for the truth. I'd argue that, easily, the main character of Eurelo 6 is also Branya. She's someone who experiences all the ups and downs as the cast. She was born in the underground, yet also knows Bellabog, and she learns the lessons of preservation and grows as a character. We follow her quest of discovery and see the events from her perspective. She also has a connection to the main villain of the arc, her mother, who is the antithesis of preservation. The Stellaron has crept into her head and convinced her that giving up is the only choice. She's also the one responsible for the current state of the underground, which you experience. The entirety of the story here centers around these two characters and their actions, so it feels really cohesive and focused. Again, Eurelo 6 does have some issues, but it's also paced extremely well and utilizes all of its cast almost perfectly. Yes, in a gotcha story, you'll have the characters like Hook and Pela, who are just kind of there 
Even though I'm not angry about Pela, since she wasn't used in the story, so she wasn't really misused. Compare that then to most characters on Lofu so far, and they all kind of feel like hooks. Maybe the main character is Jing Yuan? Who knows, because I don't even know him yet. Maybe the main villain is a shrouded abundance character? Luo Cha, maybe? I don't know, no clue yet. And the issue isn't not knowing or a lack of clarity. It's a lack of central focus, further amplified by a rando world quest thrown into the mix to further mess up the pacing and crowd the cast of this world even more. The characters are also not connected to the path of the hunt thematically. It doesn't seem like any of them are, actually. Maybe Jing Yuan, but that may be it. The cynic in me makes me think all the characters feel hollow and tour guidey because Hoyover simply needed pullable characters from the Lofu. This story works just as well. Not kidding. If you cut out everyone from the story other than Jing Yuan and Fu Xuan, every other character has provided almost nothing of substance, either in their own development or in their own contributions to the plot. The best part of this world, ironically, is everything not from it. I still love the central cast, and being able to play as Dan Hung away from the party is a lot of fun, even though we haven't gotten a ton of it. Same is true for the Kafka interrogation. It puts more focus on what the main plot of this game actually is, and it further shows how fun the Stellaron Hunters are as a group. The Last World really didn't give us development from the main cast, just fun interactions. I was hoping this world would blend the two main characters developing in a world with a clear, cohesive story. I'm glad Hoyoverse admitted that someone shit on their rug, but maybe they should clean up the throw up off their walls too while they're at it. Now I'm very aware that there will be more to this world. I'd say around 30 to 40% of it is finished. So there's still a chance that the story could make all of this make sense. Maybe, but I have a hard time seeing that happen. With so many seemingly random and pointless tour guide characters and a lack of a central antagonist, I'm having a hard time caring about anything on the ship other than Dan Hung and the interest with the Stellaron Hunters. This world sadly feels way more similar to Herta Space Station than it does Eurelo 6, and that's a big bummer. So what does this mean about the future of Honkai Star Rail? Well, if we're being cynical, it could mean a lack of cohesive vision for this world and maybe future ones. That this world will likely have good moments, but the only thing we'll get out of it narratively are some cool looking characters and important reveals about the larger plot, which means the writers aren't writing worlds in a similar way to how they wrote Eurelo 6, that being around a central path with a clear thematic vision being tailored to. But it could also mean what I think it might mean. This part of the story was rushed for content and for characters, and that while we might have some pointless characters now, a clear cohesive vision for this world will become apparent when more quests are added. The fact that they openly admitted to how poorly implemented the Sanctus Medicus quest was tells me that they're kinda embarrassed by it. If this was their vision, then they'd just force players to get over it and play it. They've clearly done that before in a lot of Genshin quests. These are the same people that don't have a skip button because they want you to care about the story. I'm sure though that these writers don't want things to be half-assed, and if I'm to believe that these are the same writers who wrote Eurelo 6, I have to believe that they're competent enough to realize that, well, they've got a lot to fix here. Speaking of things being fixed, fix my empty bank account! But seriously, thank you to all of my current patrons. You all aren't like Sanctus Medicus, instead you're like the Astral Express crew. So I hope you enjoy the journey that this channel continues to go on. You're all amazing, and I'll see you.